Well, Jenny, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, all right. Congratulations. Here it is. There it is for my viewers who can see it. This is the book, City of Likes. Now, if I can do my math, that's book number four, but novel number one, correct? So it's book number three in the like journey of books, but I have a fourth coming out in September. So you're not wrong. Right. You the have cookbook. four books at the end of this year. Yes. But this is number three in the, the uh, I don't know, the birth order. Okay. Right. In, in the, in the, <laughs> for your children, this is the third or fourth. All right. Yes. And so, cause you have a memoir. I have I two like memoirs. Just, <laughs> well, so do you consider the other collection of essays, a cause you have I like you just the way I am, which is a very funny title. Really good. So that's your like a memoir. But then the um, other I thought was an essay collection slash memoir. How do you see it? Oh, gosh. I mean, well, I don't know. I, I think it's also sort of a memoir. It's really about like the year of my life after first having my son. Yeah. And my sort of postpartum from the edge. Yeah. <laughs> like just everything yeah. I went through. All right. So let's back up let's back up a little bit uh because you live you live a very interesting life your career you're a writer but you're an actress you're a bit of a personality an online personality i don't know if you like that term but i think is yes, that a fair i'm description? down with that sure you're that's okay fair that? that's very fair okay uh but let's let's talk about young innocent jenny who is just okay. a little girl somewhere where, yes. where was she? Where was she a little girl? I was bouncing around. I mean, I was with parents who got divorced when I was two and I lived in San Diego. I lived in Eugene, Oregon. I lived in Salem, Oregon. I lived in Scottsdale, um, oh. Coronado, California. Um, I was kind of all over the place, just sort of following my mom um, right. up until like about 12 when uh, I came home one summer and she was living on some guy's like boat. And she was like, I kind of don't how to be a mom anymore just like wow. point blank and really so then she sent us to live with my dad I lived with my dad for a year then bounced back to my mom and then sent, we went back to my dad wow. um back and forth Arizona San Diego a lot and then um around high school I just like I couldn't keep doing it so I just, I just stayed in Arizona with my dad and my sister actually moved back and, and did high school in San Diego with my mom so wow. it's that something I can't rough. Oh, I cannot imagine doing that to my children. But again, you know, in the 80s and 90s, like parenting was a little different. Like kids were it not was. really the priority. <laughs> not really. Well, it depends on the parent, of course. I think it depends on the parent. But yeah, I think like, you know, just like the it sounds movement tough, man. to, you know, towards like treating kids as actual human beings and not just like inanimate objects. I do think to some degree, as, di as problematic as some parents are in, in the, in, as when we were kids, if you look back at some point, you will see that there was something about that that forged you, I think. that. Oh my God, completely. Right? Whether you yes, didn't like it at God. the time. No, the right? pain is like what has like made me funny. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I'm, thank God, thank God that all of these things happened. Thank, and thank God for like all of the adversity and, and um, rejection that like, has happened along the way because I don't think I would be as like hungry as I am without it. Funny is an interesting muscle. Did you develop it as a coping mechanism, as a, as a means of just communication? Like, how did you find yes. that voice? Cause you obviously found it young. Yeah. I mean, maybe you did like I don't know. comedy. Like I've always like, just like, it's a way of like avoiding intimacy and like protecting myself. Oh, so yeah. like, I would always like just deflect with comedy and also, um, I think I didn't really know that I was funny. I, I don't think I knew I was funny until I started writing. I thought, right. you know, when I was in college, I was doing super serious, you know, dramatic pieces. And, and and I was, I was, oh my God. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was all about it. And even when I first started acting, I was on all these procedural one hours. I was, was never even going up for comedies. Oh, okay. Oh, it wasn't interesting. until I started writing where I was like, you know, because I was afraid to be funny in a lot of ways, because I was grew up and I was dyslexic and in the eighties, like being dyslexic, it wasn't like wow. you had any sort of support. Right. Um, so I felt like I wasn't smart. And I thought that if right. I was funny and especially at that time in TV to be like funny, 
and blonde meant that you were playing like a bimbo, which was right. the last thing I could tolerate. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, it's interesting. The attractive, funny woman has come around more recently, like as an acceptable, oh, yeah. that was not in the eighties and nineties, you were kind of goofy looking. You were the you ditzy were the, blonde. And that right. is a role that I just like rejected. Like, so I mean, like, <laughs> that was everything that I was like trying to right. you know fight against. Right. So, okay. But you start writing a novel and what I was getting to this is a whole different animal. It's a whole different animal yes, than really. an essay or a short story even. Yes. And yes. how was it? First of all, did you think what, what, what came over you? Why? Why do this to yourself, Jenny? And was well, it I'll tell you what happened was I what? sat down with this fancy agent in New York. I needed a new agent. Okay. Um, and he said to me, he's like, your last two books did okay. And I was like, well, I made the list, you know? And he's like, right. <laughs> he's like, that doesn't mean anything. Right. Like, laughed in my face. <laughs> he's like, that doesn't mean anything. And he said, do you want to tell me what you want to do next? Or do you want me to tell you what I think you should do? And I was like, whoa, wow. why don't All you right. tell me what you think I should do? And he said, I think you have a voice for fiction. And I think you should try to write a novel because if you can write fiction, you can do anything. You can have the, whatever kind of life you want. And I said, I left there just reeling, thinking, what is this guy fucking talking about? <laughs> I'm writing clearly another memoir. I, I had just adapted my second book as a feature for Warner Brothers, right? right? So I had already taken a collection of short stories and tried to make them into a three act structure. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this again. I'm tired <laughs> of learning a new skill set every time I want to write something. I just want to get good at one thing and do it. Right. Uh, and so I went home and I tried to, I started, I took, you know, like three months and I started this proposal for what I assumed would be my third book, which would have been like, you know, another memoir. And I was just not happy with it. And my friend said to me, instead of writing about, you know, motherhood and what you, what, you know, you okay. think people want out of you right now, he's like, why don't you write about what's actually going on? Which was, I had moved to New York city and fallen into this like weird sort of, I don't know, I guess just like role as mom influencer because right. I had a newborn, a second child, and I ha also had a following of women between the ages of like 18 to 35 with a little bit of buying power and companies just were like hounding Hungry. me down. And right. yeah, and they wanted me to post their shit. They wanted me to sell oh, whatever wow. it was for them. And so I got swept up in this world um, and I saw a lot of stuff. And, and one of the craziest things was just like the disparity between motherhood as it was being sold online and motherhood that, you know, as I was lived. seeing around me as yeah. it was lived by these, you know, other influencers around me. And I was just haunted by this sort of question, which just like, I could not get out of my head, which was, if you're so busy curating parenting online for other people, how present are you in your real life for your actual kids? Right. And, and that like, was just such a fear and an anxiety that I couldn't turn my back on. And that's when I went back to this agent and I was like, okay, you're fucking on. I'll try it. <laughs> but the first draft didn't work. He was like, this is a beautiful disaster. I rewrote it again. We took it out. I was, I was passed on by six publishers yeah. And at that point I was like, something's wrong. The manuscript's clearly not ready. I pulled, pulled the submission, which is like terrible. Right. Um, and I took another year and I rewrote it. Wow. And I wow. went back out with it with a different agent. Cause of course, like in this process, I also ended up like leaving this agent. Right. Uh, I went back out with the proposal and now like the capital's being stormed. It's also like a terrible time to be selling mm -hmm you know, yes. a book about this kind of stuff. And people started saying, I don't know. I don't know if in like a post COVID world, a book about influencers in lower Manhattan doesn't read as tone deaf. Um, and I kept saying, no guys, this book is worthy. And this, this is what, this is actually happening. Right. You're wrong. I know right. this is, I know this needs to be in the world. Like th this is my, my truth. And I, I knew that if I didn't write this book, I would become this book. So like, Wow. I knew that like other women, it would resonate. Um, and eventually what happened after I was passed on by, I don't know, 12 more houses was that I found a producer in LA who had an imprint. And he's like, I mean, I've published a book on toys, never done this before, but 
I said, can you get it bound? Can you get it bound and on bookshelves? And he said, right. yes. And I said, then like, let's go. Yeah. So and, that's what the nice thing about being who you are is you can say, and I will handle a lot of the publicity. Like I can, no, I was like, I will crush for you. <laughs> I will fucking, you will never have a better business partner than me. Trust me. Like right. I can sl- sell shit. Right. Till the cows come home. Like right. I should have been a QVC person. Like, <laughs> that was the, th- I was like, don't worry about the rest. Just get it on bookshelves. I'm not quite done with you, Jenny. I want you to, I want you to finish the sentence for me before I set you free. Ready? Okay. Put your writer's yes. cap on. I want you to, if, if writing, all the writing you've done, Twitter, uh-huh. short stories, novels, if writing has taught you anything, it has taught you what? That being honest and vulnerable is truly will always will always like prevail like if you are just like fully honest with yourself like if you just give it and don't try to like put on any, any pretense or try to pretend you're something else like it's always good it's you know you're in your zone and it's the writing is working and good like when you are truly just brutally honest Don't try to like protect anyone's feelings. You can always change their name later.